Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today let's explore Northern Rhone and its wines. I believe that Northern Rhone is a very complex region and certainly each of its appellations deserves a video on its own, but we have to start somewhere, right? Therefore, even though the Northern Rhone is smaller than Southern Rhone and even smaller than the Chateauneuf du Pape appellation, many of its appellations are well known worldwide, highly praised and respected. Think of Cotroti, Hermitage and Condru alone. I once read in one of the leading wine magazines, I don't remember who said it though, but they noted that even though Southern and Northern Rhone share a similar name, they couldn't be more different in terms of geography, climate and wine style. And indeed, as I learn and explore these two parts of Rhone Valley, they are so very distinctive. From viticulture to winemaking and ultimately in the wines they produce. Some time ago I made a video about the Southern Rhone, so today let's finally explore Northern Rhone. The Rhone Valley is located in southeastern part of France. Unlike the Southern Rhone, the Northern Rhone is defined by a dramatic landscape with vineyards planted on very steep slopes, oftentimes on terraces. These vineyards are situated within a rather narrow strip close to the Rhone River itself. The majority of these vineyards are located on the western side of the river, while Croze Hermitage and Hermitage are located on the eastern side. The climate here is more continental compared to the southern Rhone, resulting in higher diurnal temperature shifts and more pronounced seasons. Similarly as in southern Rhone, here too the cool, dry and knocking you from your feet Mistral has a significant impact on the region. This wind is often the reason why initially wines are planted at the angle, allowing them to straighten up over the time by the force of Mistral. It also plays a beneficial role in significantly reducing the pressure of fungal diseases. Unlike the Southern Rhone, we find fewer grape varieties of importance here in the Northern Rhone. The only reigning red grape variety is Syrah, and its expression in Cotroti and Hermitage is considered by many to be the most classic examples of this grape variety. Syrah produces dark colored wines, oftentimes with rich and dense body and firm tannin structure. However, there are three white grape varieties allowed in the appellations of Northern Rhone, which are Viognier, Marsagne and Roussagne. While many argue that Viognier is the most important white grape variety of the three in the area, it is certainly the best known. After all, it has its own appellations such as Condru and Chateau Grier, producing rich, aromatic, ripe stone fruit packed wines with phenolic backbone. However, in my own opinion, Roussagne is the hidden gem of the region. Though rarely found standalone and often blended with Marsagne, and more often than not playing a minority role, it actually offers beautiful aromatics, a lively acidic backbone, and thus also provides great aging potential. For those of you who rush to comment that it must not be that great if it is not the main player, the simple answer is that it is very difficult to grow. And lastly comes Marsagne, which is also an aromatic grape, though slightly less than Roussagne and offers more body and rather oily texture to the wine. Despite having more white grape varieties allowed than red, this still is very much red wine country. Syrah rules this region. As I mentioned before, it produces structured, deeply colored and oftentimes barrel aged red wines. A variety of oak barrel sizes can be used as well as new or old oak or mix of both for the production of white and red wines. The best examples are known to have great aging potential and would certainly be a great addition to anyone's cellar. Another interesting fact is that many renowned red wine appellations such as Hermitage and Saint Joseph allows addition of white grape varieties. However, it must be done through co-fermentation. According to winemakers who practice this, it helps to stabilize the color, soften the tannin and add a certain freshness and lightness to the wine. 
What I find to be very interesting topic is the use of stems in the winemaking. Syrah is one of those grapes where use of stems is widely discussed. Many argue that it can increase flavor complexity, adding notes of Earl Grey and certain tannic grip. And some winemakers will allow partial whole cluster fermentation, adding more sweet fruit to the flavors and maybe slightly soften the tannin structure. There is a minuscule amount of bottle fermented sparkling wine produced here as well, mainly in the Saint-Pere appellation. Even rarer is the Win de Pays style made from grapes dried outside, making wines with certain richness and sweetness. The most important appellations in terms of quality and prestige certainly are Hermitage and Cotreti. Cotreti can only be read, however, up to 20% of Viognier can be added to the ferment. Hermitage can be bottled red and white. Red must be made of Syrah with up to 15% of Marsagne and Roussagne added and white made from Marsagne and Roussagne or a blend of the two. These are wines capable of long life in the cellars while also offering beautiful fruit early in their life. It is possible to find great bargains in Creuse Hermitage as well, though one must know where to look. It will usually be lighter and more accessible in its youth, offering more immediate fruit and oftentimes less concentration or depth. Often described as less refined or more rustic are the appellations of Saint Joseph and Cornas, though I believe they can offer great value for those of us who love the expression of Syrah here. Cornas is the only red wine appellation that must be made from 100% Syrah, while Saint Joseph allows up to 10% addition of Marsagne and Roussagne. We, of course, cannot forget about two exclusive white wine appellations, Condru and Monopole Chateau Grillet. Both must be made from 100% Viognier, an aromatic white grape variety capable of producing wines of full body and high concentration, as well as developing elevated alcohol levels. There are epic Condru wines produced and they are not so great examples also widely available in the market. I guess one must know the producers in order to know where to look. So here you go, this is a short introduction into Northern Rhone wine region. Please let me know in the comments which appellations you would like to explore deeper next. And if you haven't watched the video on Southern Rhone yet, you can do it by clicking here.